All right, good morning. It's Tangle Tuesday again, and I'm Loretta West, certified Zen Tangle teacher and all around art wanderer. Um, this morning, we're going to do a, a lovely lesson that was inspired by somebody else. I can't remember the name, but thank you to whoever you are. The, the um, string is inspired by someone else, but everything else is something I came up with. Um, you're going to need any size paper you want to work on. This today, you can use a Zentangle tile. So oop, 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 this size will work. Um, this is a six by six inch piece of Strathmore artist tile, which is vellum surface, which I use because it's big and you can see. But if you want to use smaller, go ahead. If you have sketchbook paper and want to use that, go ahead. Just keep in mind, whatever you're using, if you're going to use markers, which I plan to use today, um, that it will take it. Um, you could use colored pencils as well. You don't have to use color today. We're going to need a pen uh, for my fine pen today. I have a Faber-Castell pit pen in black and it's size S. Whoops, whoops, for I assume small. So it's, a, it's like an 01. It's like a Micron 01. But I like it because the barrel is fatter than the Micron. So for hands that are older like mine and you're drawing for a long time, it's nicer to have the fatter barrel. And for a thicker line, if you want, you can just use one pen for the whole time, but you might want to change pens here and there. It's a Sakura Sensei Pen 04. Whoops, 04. And uh, again, it's got a fatter barrel than the Microns and it holds more ink. And um, you'll need a pencil, an HB pencil is fine. This one is a 4B um, because it's a little darker so that you can see. And optional, you can use a blending stump like this worn out Tortion. And uh, hopefully yours isn't as worn out as mine. So let's just start by sitting down comfortably. And I'm just gonna just move my camera is a little wonky. What's going on here? Where things, things are sideways all of a sudden. Hmm. Well, it should be straight like that, but it's not. So we're going to make it the way it is. Fine and dandy. Want to be like that? Go ahead. Okay. So, um, oh, also for color, let's, oh, 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 before I go on, uh, I've got some koi coloring brush pens. So even if you just have a Sharpie, if you want to use a marker, that'll work just fine. And I also have some Faber-Castell um, pit pens in different colors. So it's just, you know, mix and match today. Those are my markers for today. I'm going to just put them aside a little bit because they're just going to get in the way. I can see that. Okay. So like I said before, before I hit everything, take a moment just to sit and relax. Maybe take a deep breath. And just maybe practice a little gratitude for just this time that you're taking for yourself today. That you're worth it. You're worth the time to take to relax and to do something different with your time. All right, so in classic Zentangle style, we're going to start with our pencil and um, about a thumb's width for my paper size. But if you've got, you know, a tile, it might be a finger's width from the corner. I'm going to put a dot and another dot roughly across from that and another dot down here and another dot down here. Okay, and then we're going to join 
the dots. And you could make it straightish like I am, or you could make it wavy, zigzaggy, loopy. You could make it indicative to how you're feeling right now as a little biofeedback. Whatever you feel like works for you. Oops, I'm just made a little oopsie there. It's okay. So there we go. Now in one of the corners, I'm gonna pick the upper left corner because I'm right-handed and I don't wanna smear everything. So if you're left-handed, you might wanna do the upper right corner or lower. You could also go down here if you're right-handed. And I'm going to start with an orb shape. It's quite large, so it'd be about the size of a nickel or a quarter. And if you're in Europe, about the size of a euro in the corner. And while you're tangling today, I would like you to think about a word that you might want to put in there a word that gets you through the day, a word that might help someone else, just a word. And then we're going to do this lovely little string starting here, coming around and joining up to that. Then a little ways away, another one, and I'm still doing this with my pencil. And then I'm going to start down here and do a little wider one. And there we go. So just this lovely arcing lines. And again, this one's closer to that one. And you might have more spaces than I do. That's okay. However many spaces will work. It doesn't have to have the correct amount. Any amount will do. I just have to have one, two, three, four, five. Five big spaces and one, two, three, four, five little spaces. Now this is a choice that you get to make too right now, whether you want to tangle in the little spaces with little tiny tangles or tangle in the larger spaces, which I'm going to do. Your decision as to how you want to, to do it today. I leave you a lot of latitude. I don't expect you to do what I do. I expect you to do what you feel is right for you. So anything that you want to do, another tangle that you think, oh, this fits for me better than what I see happening on the screen, feel free to do that. Okay, so we're gonna start with a, you know, a crescent moon variation. Crescent moon, it's great. I find it's great to start with a tangle that you know um, to warm up with, or one that you love. So we're just going to start with the little crescent moon shapes and just pick any of the big spaces that's comfortable to you to access. And just start with our little crescent moon shapes. And mine are quite large, you can see that. I'll do half a little moon there. And then we're going to do a little rainbow arch over each one. Start 
start again and do another arch. Let's take a moment and just notice how quickly or slowly you're going. And if you find yourself going really, really fast, like do, 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 maybe make a mental note of that and see if you can slow down. Just slow down a little bit. And I'm gonna do another one, why not? I can have as many rainbow arches as I want. And here, I'm just gonna do a partial right there. And it's coming up and going around here. Coming up and going around there. Now you could be happy with that. Like, oh, I'm happy. I'm going in there with my markers and I can make this really sing. I could even write a word in there if I wanted to, or a sentence, or a paragraph, or a novel, if you write really small. But, you know, it's up to you whether you are happy, whether you, you know, how far you want to take something. And then we'll just go in an aura around this line, these lines. I'm going to come through here with my little pen and come back out. And just take a minute and maybe just take a pause between each segment. And this one is one that I just learned this week. And it's called, let me get a piece of paper. It's called Ka Zuma by Cindy Knapp. Okay, Kazuma by Cindy Knapp. And it's based on a grid pattern. So what I'm gonna do, you can have your grid, you know, I'm gonna start in this big section here. Um, you can make your lines this way, or you could turn your paper and make them this way, whatever you'd like to do. I'm gonna start here with my pen again and carry on down here. And again, I'm making this grid quite large because I've got these motifs I want to put in there and make sure that I'm not trying to squeeze the ink in there. So I'm making some vertical lines. And then I'm going to make, now here's a choice. You could make the horizontal lines straight or you can have them follow the curve and see what happens. It's going to bend 
the design. And that could be very cool, but I'm going to just for teaching sake, do it horizontal. And I'm gonna do it starting from, I don't know, a second here. I'm gonna leave this blank here because it's no way I'm gonna fit anything in there. Just like that. Like that. Little guy there. So now you've got your basic grid. And I'm going to show you in a where it's full as opposed to a partial to begin with. I always do that. I, don't, I can't start where it's a, a fragment, fragmented square. My brain will not work there. So just a little orb in the center. And then these pointed V shape to each corner, but to the point towards the middle. Oh, that was a little narrow, Loretta. Mm -hmm. Oh well, this is entangle. It's all good. Okay. And maybe you'll be happy with just that. But the other way, the other addition here is keeping in sort of our crescent moon idea is you can just do one single line or a double line here, an aura around that. Okay. And then we'll do the one above it with a circle. We're going to do the same thing, these spikes coming off. But we're going to join down here. So I'm going to take the line this way and the line that way. And again, this way and that way. this way and that way. And then we're going to make the seed shape. She shows hers as much more round, but we're just gonna go with what we got. Then I'll do another one over here. Start down here. Change and my paper around so it's easier. Don't be afraid to move your paper to make it more comfortable for you to draw. Oops, things are wonky. Here we go. And again, the orb or half an orb, crescent moon. One side, the other side. And then, oh, these ones I forgot to do it on this one over here. So you get the idea of what's going on here. It makes this lovely star, four pointed star.
And just take breaks. Don't be afraid to take breaks. And sit up and maybe look at something at a distance. Give your eyes a break. Maybe take a deep breath. Sort of check in, see how you feel compared to how we started. Is it different? Do you feel a little more calm? Because that is the whole point of this exercise. I think sometimes we forget that. We get caught up in how things look. Maybe we think about the end product a little too much and forget that it's about the doing. Forget that it's about how it's designed and tangles designed to make you feel better, help you feel better, help you relax. The end product is the icing on the cake. Sometimes, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's not as you planned it to be at all. And maybe you're not too thrilled with it, but if you feel better, if you feel calmer, then that's the desire. It's done its job. It's all practice, really. So that gets you started on that one. You can finish it later at your leisure. I'm going to move along because we still have to color. I realize I'm like, oh, I could do this all day. Um, and maybe that's not such a good idea. This next one, I really like this one. I do it a lot and it's called Zulu. And that's how I found Kazuma's when I was looking up Zulu. <laughs> Okay, so Zulu is Z-O-O-L-O-O, -O -O, and it's by Judy. I'm going to say Vogue's, I hope, and I think she's from South Africa. So let's carry on and do that one. I'm going to turn my tile so that it's based better. <laughs> and uh, okay, so this one starts. Let's make sure I get this right here. Okay. Okay, so I'm just trying to figure out how to do this. I'm going to start this way. This is going to be on a curve. So I'm going to do a curved line bisecting this space. And then I'm going to start making little Zulus. So starting here with this line coming down and then back up again and back down, and back up again, and back down. It's going to get larger as I get into a bigger space. And I'm going to try to make them all a nice rounded shape, but well, sometimes that doesn't work, but that's okay. 
And then we're gonna turn it around and go the other way to meet this. I wanna meet this line down here. And coming around and meet that line there. I'm trying to see here, the cottonwoods are fluffing everywhere and my eyes are all scratchy and weird. But so far I'm okay. Everything's kind of slightly out of focus. <laughs> okay. And then bisect each of these shapes with a vertical line. Okay, and again, I'm going to do a, a full one here. And we're going to our vertical and then a horizontal line. Another vertical and a horizontal line. And another one. And you can do as many as you want. I'm just going to do three. If you want to fill that space up, go right ahead. So this was designed um, from South African tribal shields. And you can make this, these lines connect if you want. Some did, some didn't. But if you'd like to go right ahead. Again, if you see this shape here and you think, oh, I'm going to do something different in each one of these quadrants, like paradox would look cool in there. And then we did that, some of that last week. Was it last week? I don't know. The weeks just go, maybe it was two weeks ago. This is a great tangle for beginners. If you're looking for showing somebody who's just starting. And I wanted to also, I put it on the um, Certified Zen Tangle Facebook page yesterday, but I also wanted to announce it here. If you're new, if you're a new Certified Zentangle teacher and you want some teaching experience, then contact me and we can get you to come and do a guest teaching here on Tangle Tuesday. And I'll help you as long as you've got the, you're in the right time zone, so you don't have to get up at two in the morning and you're have all the equipment that you need to run a Zoom class, then please contact me and uh, we'll get you going. We'll get you on the schedule. Okay, so I've got this one as a partial, right? So it's going to come down here.
Notice my lines, they're not perfect. They're wobbly. They have character. Straight lines don't have a lot of character. These ones do. Okay. So, I'm just gonna do this triangular shape, the triangular, triangular, say it. Ha, oh, there, my aura, the inner workings. I've got a little triangle here, so I want to put that in there. Okay. Well, this one, I don't know. Does it have a name? Probably has a name, but I don't know what it is and I can't remember. One day I really should look at it, seriously. <laughs> That's something I do often. So you're going to segment, I'm gonna do this one up here. The vertical lines. And going to bisect it with a diagonal line this way, a diagonal line that way, and the same one in the same way. And I'll leave that blank too tiny. We're just going to put V shapes here. And I'm going to black this one in. I realize we haven't really blacked much in today, have we? And then one over here. this one in. You could do another line if you want to make them smaller. Your little triangle smaller. Put your black in if you feel like it. Continue these lines here, join them up a little bit. They're kind of funny looking triangle, but that's okay. One of the things I really love to do in the summer is make art outside. I don't know, it just seems better. It's like having, going camping and having camp coffee. It's just better, it tastes better. I like to sit in the backyard under the umbrella. Won't realize it. Oh, that one's going to be bigger. Let's 
So the last one that I have, you might have more, I am going to invite you to choose your own adventure there. So pick whatever tangle you like to put in there and have fun. Or you could write something. It's a blank space. You could write anything you want. If you thought of a word for the center, you might want to think about putting that in there. You might want to get, wait till you're all done and then look at it and think of a word. So let's just work on a little color here. And before I do that, I'm just going to take my hands <laughs> and just do a little bit of, give them a little love. Maybe give them a little rub, you know, because they work hard, especially in the summer, gardening, kayaking, sailing, they get sore. So give them a little love, little break. Okay. So I really want to go with some very juicy colors. So I've got this orange and Let's mix and match. So it's always good to test your colors first to see and make sure they all work together. So this is a different, because they're different uh, manufacturers here. So that's a nice little turquoise blue, a favorite Castell blue. And I got this orange. Oh, they're wild together. Perfect. And um, a little pink. Yeah, that works to my eye. Maybe it's too much for you. And a little magenta. Yeah, we're going with those. So the key is when you're doing this and you're picking colors, try to keep it down to no more than five. So I have four. And uh, if you start getting more than five, then things can start looking a little crazy. Are Unless they you want color? crazy. Pardon? What are, col what are colors? Watercolor is fine if you have watercolor paper you're using. Uh, yeah, what are you using? These are, are um, brush pens. These are what markers. Uh, let's see what the tip looks like. I don't know. Is that the same as a, is that a watercolor pen? No, I don't believe so. It's got, it's water-based ink. Oh, okay. I don't Thank know you. really, there's so many things out there. <laughs> I don't I know. know what um, what all of it makes. But if you have a question about that specifically, you can ask me in the chat and I can answer it later. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. So let's start um, with some color. Now you can, you know, leave, I'm gonna leave these lines these dividing lines blank. But again, you could write something in there. Cool. I'm thinking about words and passages from poetry and all sorts of stuff for later. And um, I'll start with pink. I'm in the pink. And I want to do this is the Koi coloring brush pen. I'm just going to. Give some pink stars here. Whoa, that's bright. But it's the first of June and things are popping in the garden and in the hillsides here. My peonies have started to open. The lupin are blooming everywhere and they make the hillsides and all the pastures that are around us this lovely light purple. And it's just, it's, it's stunning. It makes for lots of sneezing, <laughs> but um, it's worth it. It's worth it. So I'm trying to stay in the lines, but this, these are not very fine tipped and they are a little fat. So, yeah, I'll just live with what I got. I 
I was never good at coloring within the lines as a kid. So I'm still doing that and that's okay. We had very strict neighbors who lived next door. There were, we had four girls in our house, four daughters, and they had four daughters and one son. And they, the mother was a reformed nun. So they had many, many rules. And we grew up in a household with some rules, but not that many. And they would have to do their homework after school and I would go over there to play and they'd be doing their homework. So I would color. <laughs> and I remember coloring outside the lines and being instructed on how to color within the lines. So that was pretty funny. It didn't stick very well. Loretta, this is Jennifer. What was the name of this tangle again, please? It is called Kazuma. K-A-Z-U-M-A -A by Cindy Knapp. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's a cool tangle. I like it. I like any tangle that makes another shape you know, is connecting and then makes its own other new shape. I, I don't know. I think it's very cool when it does that. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this pink over to another area. This bright pink, and I'm gonna have it over here next to my dark. It's gonna make it even more vibrant. I was, uh, oh, okay, I went right outside the line there. Oh, well live with it. Um, I was out plein air painting with a gal I know on Saturday and uh, teaching her how to do a little watercolor. And we were talking about how certainly in watercolor, you just lay things down. You don't mess with it. Don't go back and pet things. Because <laughs> as it dries, it leaves streaks. And uh, things that you don't really want. And when I think of that, you know, I told her the, the line that I use that I was taught, which is when you're laying down color and watercolor, you let it, you lay it down and watch it quiver. And so when I see this bright pink, I think of that. I think the quivering is so bright. Okay, so there we go with the pink. And let's um, go with this orange. And I do these little orbs here. Do I go all the way around or just partly? I don't know. I just realized here I needed to. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to do these whole things right there. We grew up in the, or I grew up in the far north. And uh, there was not a lot of outside influences, <laughs> except for, you know, things we could see in a magazine or something like that. Um, and when I was, I don't know, I must have been like 13 and my mom loves, loved to sew. And she decided she was gonna redecorate my bedroom and had picked out a pattern for bolsters and bedspread, the whole, whole thing. Cause I had this rug that was like a meadow, but pink, hot pink was really in there big time. And I probably couldn't even look at it now. Um, anyway, so she made 
I'm going to take this uh, blue paper castell turquoise. What's it called? It's called light cobalt tur turquoise. And anyway, so she made uh, this all, and it was hot pink because hot pink was a was a trend. I'm not sure if I like this blue on there. Well, maybe it's okay. So the favor of pastel, um, castel pit pen, say that fast, is a little finer tip so I can get into those little areas better. Again, you go slowly. And think about how do you feel, maybe your word that you're thinking of to put in that little space or a bunch of words to put in the spaces. Ooh, test pattern. Whoa. I think that automatically this camera is toning it down. This <laughs> is very bright. <laughs> it's probably frying out his little brain. Okay. So again, I want to take this blue and go over here. I'm going to go right over that pink that I smudged over. Now it's turned purple. But actually, I like that. Hmm. I see where I made a mistake there. Gotta put another line in there. So I like this little purple I created. If I took this blue and went right over, yep. Right over the pink with the blue. Nice, awesome purple. Pretty dark though. But I think I'll just do it for the inner ones. So don't be afraid when you make a little coloring challenge to sort of go with it. It's like, okay, so it's kind of dark. You can't really see it, it's very dark, but there's a very lovely violet in there. So have fun finishing it up and please feel free to share this on the Tangle Tuesday Facebook page. Um, if you're not a member already, you have need to ask to join, but I let you in and uh, to share what you have done your finished creation and thank you very much for joining me today i'm going to stop the recording